Welcome back. Mainly stupid. I'm co-host Garrett. I am at Foulfly. And I am co-host Huey McDougal at Hubeck87 on Twitter and Instagram. Appreciate everybody's listenings in the times of being stuck in your house. I mean, fuck, you ain't got any other excuses, so might as well hop on. Oh, yeah. Uh oh. Whew, phew. <laughs> Limbs closed. <laughs> got a bit, a bit of a bad situation happening around here. I tried to make it better right before we started recording. I really, I really didn't. It's, it's not bad on my end, anyways. For the people at home, we're recording safely from our own homes due to Dis- distancing socially. Yep. But we're together in our minds. I, I can mean, see him. I just can't touch him, which we're is saving, unfortunate. We're, but we're saving the world, really. I, I know. You know, if if our if anybody listening right now has listened to our previous episodes, we have gone over my anxieties with the coronavirus. It's still there, but I'm happy to say I've felt better, much better the past four or five days. I've had some ups and downs, but doing all right. So I had an I had an interesting discussion about it today. Yeah. I think it's bullshit. What, coronavirus? Yeah. Yeah. All it, right. It's it's bad. Yes. People are dying. Okay. People are dying other shit. But the big thing when it first came out, and the reason everyone got so panicky about it was because they're like, the fucking numbers are so high on the amount of people that have it and are dying. Well, then you learn that, oh, fuck, we really don't have testing for this. So the only people we're testing are the ones that are in ICU already. So it's like, yeah. well, if you if you already entered the doors into the ICU, you've already kind of... The thing is just, like... You've crossed that just, threshold, though. You're You're fucked. I'm sorry. Yeah. And, and the big thing is like overwhelming the hospitals. But if we, if we continue to do the social distancing like we're supposed to, yeah, I'm, I'm going to work. I will right. go ahead and say I'm essential um, to the public. They need, they need my uh, assistance. So, well, I mean, today you yeah. probably had guys coming in, chainsaws broken, snowblowers broken, had to clear yeah. the pathways, got, had to get the fucking people to the stores. Got to feed, got to feed their animals, yeah. you know? Uh, so, I mean, as of, I guess, 1201 tomorrow morning. So 1201 midnight or midnight, all non-essential businesses are supposed to be closed, which from what I read by the state's guidelines is gyms, spas, hair salons, uh, laser hair removal places, but there's like construction is that you could still do construction. You could still do agriculture, mechanics, auto repair, industrial, uh, like, like the shipyard, Pratt Whitney, all those different places could be, those are deemed essential. So, so I, and here's the, I'm not to go into the politics of it all, but, if someone comes to you and says you have to shut down, I'd be turning around and looking at Janet Mills right in her goddamn Austin Powers looking fucking face and being like, <laughs> well, then where's my compensation? You're, yeah. you're making me lose revenue. You are forcing me to shut down. And you cannot prove to me that this is going to help. You can throw all these stats about flattening the curve and everything, but you can't prove that I was going to have sick people in my fucking business. I guess like this. I, main... I just don't get where they get off closing everything and then just yeah. being like, oh, well, fuck you. Your fucking business sucks now. I, that's my biggest problem with it. Yeah. And it's going to be tough. I talked to, uh, talked to a lobsterman or not a lobsterman, but a wholesale lobster guy today um, who operates a wholesale lobster business and ships all over the world. The two main, the three main places he ships, uh, Italy, Spain, and France. Yeah, not great. They're not really uh, taking anything so, in right now. No, zero. So he has, he has a massive tank full of lobsters that he can't sell. 
he doesn't want to sell them retail and undercut the lobstermen that are trying to sell retail to save their livelihood. So his plan is he's going to have his guys come in, cook the lobsters, shuck them, and freeze the meat and, you know, either use it for himself, sell it later on down the road, you know, wholesale or whatever to restaurants and uh, just kind of go from there and then just basically ride out the storm. Yeah. I mean, yeah, there's that part of it, but I just, I'd have a real hard time if I owned a fucking bar and the state turned around and said, you've got to close. Uh, You can go fuck yourself. Well, no, we're going to make you close. Well then no, you're going to pay me. Like yeah. the, and I would just pull out numbers. These are my last two years. This is, you know, this March, is what and I a- made. March and April. This is what I made pay up motherfucker. And yeah. if you don't want to do that, then you're not closing me. I'll take a hit if I'm going to lose money, but still be able to like, you know, like I know a lot of places are having all their wait, wait staff do delivery. Yeah. So I like mean, we went to, we did Applebee's car side to go tonight. Yeah. And, um, we, uh, like they, one of the waitresses that we've seen in Applebee's before was doing the, the carry out stuff, came right to the car or whatever. And in a typical, <coughs> excuse me, in a typical situation, in my opinion, takeout, like I'm going to pick it up. I'm not going to tip. That's just how uh, I re- depends on where I am. Applebee's, I'm not going to tip. You know, if okay. if if I'm sitting down and she's going and getting my drinks and stuff like that, that's that's fine. I'm gonna. But tonight I did tip because I'm like shit's tough right now. And you know, the other conversation I had with Mandy was like we were talking about Easter and how well we're probably not going to be going anywhere for Easter just to right. be safe. That we we were talking about doing like one of those Omaha steak boxes and getting something from there. Yeah. But I'm like, what we really should do is go to Carl's. Yeah. Go to go to a local place and support it that way. Or, you know, something like that. Um just to just to help out the local economy. I mean, obviously the national economy is a big deal, but I think we need to also pump as much money if we can into our local stuff and I agree. I mean, like we were talking, another thing we were talking about at work today uh, was, was chickens. We're going to be like the past, the past week and a half, you know, out of like, if I get three phone calls right in a row, one of them is about, do you have chicks yet? Yeah. Just because everybody's home and they want, I mean, all the kids are home, so why not raise chickens? Well, it's a, dude, we've gotten more fucking rec- more people reaching out, being like, "Hey, can we buy eggs from you?" It's yep. like, it's, I, I dude, think it's, we're down to ten fucking chickens. Huey doesn't have my goddamn new chickens in yet. <laughs> so <clears throat> I, I like went one from thing, like what we were talking about with it, because that always brings in you know families because they want to bring their kids to come pick out the chicks, and you know, it, and that's it's still three weeks away. But what I said, my opinion on was it, you know, when we put a post out that beginning of that week on our social media, we put signs up at the shop. One person comes and picks up the chickens. Yeah. I, either that, or you got to put up like a menu yeah. on your, on your Facebook page of like, this is what we got. Shoot us a message when you're going to be here. Yeah, And, you know, put in an order, we'll box them up for you and fucking drop them, you know, come in and pay or whatever, however you want to do it. It's, it's, I just, I can't, um, we, depending on where we're at in the situation at that point, um, it's, it's going to be tough. So, but we'll figure it out. Moving on. Um, Last week, we talked about uh, conspiracy theories. Yeah. And I picked one. You picked one. What'd you pick? Katy Perry is actually John Benet Ramsey. What? (laughs) 
You don't remember John Benet, John Benet Ramsey? Found uh, yeah. Str- yeah, she was killed. Yeah, found strangled, but remains unsolved. Uh, only because they don't know who killed her. They found the body. Did they, though? Oh, for fuck's sakes. <laughs> I could go with the whole Avril Lavigne as a body double. That was one, like, I, basically all I did was I, uh, I Googled hilarious conspiracy theories in, and that, the Katy Perry was one was just one that made me chuckle. There was another funny one that Obama could control the weather. Um, well, that's not completely untrue because China did it. Yeah. Hilarious. And if you really want to go deep, there's a lot of like radar fields up in like the Alaska areas. Yeah. Pretty sketchy if you really start reading into them, what they're actually doing. What they say they're doing. See if I... Like I I read into the Katy Perry one, um, and it's it's obviously bullshit, but it's just fun to mess around with it. The age gap is that because Katy Perry was born in eighty four, yeah, and John Benet Ramsey was born in like ninety four or something like that or ninety something early nineties. So, <clears throat> let me. I pulled up a few here. The first one that comes up on all of them is the Avril Lavigne one. Was Avril Lavigne was replaced by a clone named Melissa? Yeah. <laughs> Alex Jones, you've heard of that? Yep. That crazy character. asshole. Uh, he says chemicals and water are turning people gay. <laughs> Conspiracy theorist and radio host, radio host Alex Jones is famous for unbelievable theories, as well as public statements that many wouldn't agree with, apart from being anti-vax, pro-guns, and a believer that the government actually controls the weather. He also claimed that the government is putting chemicals in the water that are turning people into homosexuals. He later, he later changed his theory by saying that chemical also known as the gay bomb is even turning the frogs gay. Oh, so we're going <laughs> to have a frog shortage when they stop fucking each other. So this, this thread was it's 16 crazy conspiracy theories that some people actually believe in. Number two was the Avril Lavigne was replaced by a clone named Melissa. Um, number three, Paul Cartney was, was, was actually replaced. Uh, he was dead and, he um, was replaced by a lookalike, uh, also known as the Paul is Dead Theory. It claims that the Beatles' bass guitarist and vocalist actually passed away in 1969 and was replaced by a lookalike. It all started with a rumor that McCartney had passed away in a traffic accident and later escalated into a theory that the band was trying to hide the fact Paul is dead. What seemed to be a small theory became a theme in many articles in various newspapers in 1993. McCartney joked about this theory in his live al- live album, uh, tilting it, Paul is live. Titling it is Paul is live. Um, the Hillary Clinton one, imagine that. Uh, I'll show you the, but it says Hillary Clinton's campaign logo is a reference to 9-11. If you look at it, I don't know if you can. Yeah. The plane. Yeah, it's, I've heard that one. Uh, poisonous government snow. April is the. So this was kind of was funny, or not funny, but it resonated a little bit. April is the government's blood sacrifice season. Oh really? Yeah. Some people notice that oddly enough, a huge amount of tragedies happen during the month of April. According to these people, April is actually the government's blood sacrifice season. And during this, the month government performs sacrifices. Uh, Since many tragedies tend to happen around the same time in mid-April, even CNN has published an article questioning this tragic and unexplainable coincidence. So, Prince Charles is a vampire. Um... The moon actually doesn't exist. I've heard that one. <clears throat> yeah. I've, and, you know, the whole, 
there was never a lunar landing, which if you think that, you can go ahead and get right the fuck out of America. Um, Stonehenge was built by the aliens. I'm not completely against that one. I've been watching a lot of ancient aliens lately. Yeah. It's not good for me. <laughs> <clears throat> um, I'm scrolling over some of these. Barack Obama could control the weather. Elvis Presley is still alive. I believe that. I think he's dead by now, but... Yeah, yeah, probably by now. Obama is Malcolm X's son. That's... You look at the pictures, it's very similar. Um, that's kind of... That's about it. But I thought it was funny. Um... <clears throat> couple of phone notes here. Or actually, I got no. to use my train horn tonight. I'm pretty happy. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Fucking retards. I, I hate to just come right out and say it, but... Hey, sometimes you have to. Route 103 in York. Stopped right on the bridge looking at the sunset. Little fucking hippie van. You know those yeah. fucking... I know you said you wanted one of those lifted over four-wheel drive fucking yeah. vans to live in. Yeah, well, one of them crunchy fucks was fucking stopped on the bridge with their hazards going, just looking at the sunset over the river. Ridiculous. And I'm like, so knowing what I had under the hood, I just rolled right up, right up against them and just fucking laid on it. <laughs> just, <laughs> I was they like, take, They take off? Yep. They did nice. not look real happy either because they pulled in. And the thing that gets me is like, dear, you you obviously got to live this healthier lifestyle because you're in a fucking van probably doing yoga, fucking each other yeah. in the ass. <laughs> so why don't you just go park your goddamn van, get out and fucking walk, you goddamn fucks. Mm -hmm. I just, it's unbelievable. The nerve you, of some people. Did you listen to uh, the pod? today the one that came uh, out yesterday yes I with AQ did. with AQ Shipley yeah he, he is my spirit animal he's a hilarious individual <laughs> he is just I I, <laughs> I love his uh his aspect nice, nice exhaust on his Tahoe too could hear yeah. it for fucking half the goddamn episode yeah it's just it, I love how much shit they give him and then when he was talking about Joe Paterno shitting his pants again. Yeah. <laughs> Against Ohio uh, State, they kicked our ass, too. <laughs> um, All right. Yeah. I got I got another one. Keeping yeah. on the subject of just fucking complete douchebags. While driving. Um, someone's in a crosswalk. Mm -hmm. State law. Got to stop for him. Yep. At what point do you go? As far, like, if they, my general rule with this is, if, so I've got two different ways of looking at it. If it's a crosswalk, like going through a small town, and there's a person there, and I have enough time to stop, like yeah. if they, if they're right on the edge of like they're waiting, they're ready to go, I'll go. Or I'll I'll stop as long as like I don't have to slam on my brakes. Right. No, no, no. I'm saying like okay, you 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 perform the stopping sequence. Yeah. Now person is say you're driving, they're coming from your passenger side. So they're on your side. Yeah. At what point of them obviously clearing the front of your vehicle do you go? Do you wait for the dumbass to get up on the fucking sidewalk on the other side? No. As soon they, as they as soon as they are clear of that fucking yellow line in the middle, yeah, go on. Yeah. Yeah. An another instance in which I used the train horn. And I was just way more excited about this one. Yeah. But and I didn't use the horn because I didn't want to scare the fucking lady and her kid that were walking. And like I get it, it's a kid, but if they're fucking already past you, like just go. And we nope, we had to yeah. sit there. 
while well, fucking Timmy fucking cross legs couldn't fucking get up on the fucking sidewalk. So this lady just sat there. And I'm like, would you just fucking go? The kid's fucking 20 feet that way. You're yeah. good. If you hit him, I, you shouldn't be driving. So mm-hmm. why are, why, why? Like, what are we doing here? I have no problem stopping for pedestrians. I enjoy just walking out in crosswalks if I am a pedestrian because you're supposed to stop. And if you don't stop, I'm going to kick your car. But what if it's one of the one of the crosswalk lights? Oh, no, the, you got to wait for the light. Yeah. And if you're a motherfucker that's in the crosswalk when you don't have a walk, eh, you're getting no slack, yeah. pal. Get on your horse is, is my... Uh, no, I'm coming through. So you either get on your horse or fucking backpedal. Cause yeah. Guess what? It says no. It's just like running a red light. Same same principles. You're in a car. You run a red light. I, f- I don't give a fuck about my truck that much. Yeah. So I'll hit you. I was... Uh... My boss told me a story, like, <clears throat> his uncle lives in Clearwater, Florida. Yeah. And Lots they of ha- olds. A lot of olds. They have um, alligators, very, you know, prominent in canals and stuff like that. Uh-huh. He said you could get in more trouble for running accidentally running over an alligator that's crossing the road, like coming up out of one of these canals, then hitting a pedestrian that's jaywalking in the city of Clearwater. But Florida. is the alligator using a crosswalk? No, but he's like, well, then fuck him. Well, well, all I'm saying is in Clearwater, Florida, if, if a person is jaywalking fair game. Yeah. But you run over an alligator? No. <laughs> Fucking jail, pal. Yeah. <laughs> Which I thought was kind of kind of great. Um, another thing that I had in my, or I thought about today was like, I'm at the point, you know, in my 32 years where shit hurts. Like shit starts to hurt and I have no idea why. Yeah. I'm like at the point now, right. if I sneeze hard enough, I crack my back <coughs> every time. Yeah. Like, and it like a four vertebrae crack. It's not just like a one. Yeah. The other night I got up and like, just like stretched like that, like arms back, like stretched the chest out. My sternum popped so hard. I thought I broke a rib. I was, it didn't hurt. It just the sound. And I just froze i was like yeah. oh fuck something i'm gonna just collapse i i don't know what i just did last friday i got i hopped out of my truck and i felt a pop in my knee my right knee yeah and i was like what the hell was that and then all of a sudden i couldn't walk like huh. my knee swelled up i had to wrap it to be like to take the pain away crazy times um i also have something to show the listeners but, oh boy. and I guess I should have mentioned it earlier to you, but um, we need to come up with a giveaway for somebody, but I know they can't, we're not live on anything right now, but we'll probably post this on our YouTube. Yes. But we have acquired. We have acquired some decals. Some stickers. Something, you know, pretty simple. It's just our logo. From the great state of Maine. I got one right here. Oh yeah. Garrett's right, got one right there. Right there. Oh, I got yeah. one on my I put it. one on my phone case. I s I've been seeing it. Yep. The wife's got one on hers. The girls nice. I think the girls put one on each of their Jeeps, so that's good. Perfect. Did I at what point did I do that? No, it was after we recorded. So I finally upgraded the Jeeps correctly. Oh, oh yeah. 18 volt drill batteries slide right into old tools that I took apart. Nice. Oh, it is slicker than big shit. <laughs> <clears throat> Just drop a battery in, fucking send them on their way. Yeah. I do need to go pick up some more rigid batteries. Yeah. A couple more of the big ones. They last about 35, 40 minutes, but then they take that long to charge. Yeah. No. So, so you got to have some backups. Um, Sorry, I got one to spring on you. What do you got? 
Top five dipping sauces. Ooh. Just across the board? Just you, whatever you want to fucking, whatever kind of food you're eating, whatever kind of dip you want. So, so I base dipping sauces on, on the certain foods I'm eating. So if it's wings, blue cheese. Yeah. 100%. Um, pizza. You're going to. Oh, fuck. Uh, oh, boy. We all right? Yeah. Yeah. Microphone down. <laughs> um, so wings, blue cheese, 100%. Um, uh, Jesus, I lost train of thought. Pizza. It's I've got on a kick with barbecue sauce with pizza. Yeah. Um, and this is where people are going to think I'm a crazy person. Uh, continue to think, yep. But yeah. It's just going to add to their reasons. Thousand Island dressing. Also with French fries. Well, I mean, that's basically just ketchup and mayo. Pretty much, but I hate mixing ketchup and mayo. So this is my way of not doing that, and it's Thousand Island. Which is ketchup and mayo. But it's not called that. It's it's Thousand Island. Okay. It helps you sleep at night. All right. Um, so we got three there. Um, I, don't, I, I don't mind... <clears throat> Like if it's if I've got piping hot fresh French fries, yeah, from anywhere, I'll dip them in ketchup. I like ice cold ketchup. I like a nice cold ketchup on hot fries. Yeah, I've been at a point in my life like fries have got to be hot. Other if they're not, they suck. Like if they're lukewarm, yeah. If they're just warm, they suck. They fresh French fries. Are the best. Um, so we got four there, and then I mean, as a overall, and I'm as an overall utility dipping sauce, you know, always good in a pinch. Ranch. Yeah, I think you got to put ranch and ketchup on the list, no matter what. Yeah, because you really could put them literally on anything. The, People do. <clears throat> I got turned on to a new barbecue sauce, mm. mustard based. Yep. The Carolina style. Yep. Big fan of Carolina barbecue sauce right now. Um, the other dipping sauces, I love a honey mustard. Yep. Honey mustard's good. Very Especially underrated. Chicken. Yep. Chicken pretzels. Ugh. Chicken pretzels? Or no, chicken slash pretzels. Oh yeah. Even French fries, honey mustard is fucking phenomenal. I uh, I saw, and this is, it's not technically a dipping sauce, but it was way the way it was served, in this, um, aspect was, somebody made, sausage gravy. Yeah. And then homemade biscuits around it. And you, you dip it in the sausage gravy. That's not, that's more of a it's more of a dip than a dipping sauce. I yeah, 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 yeah. I yeah, I kind of went off track there, but because like spinach and artichoke dip, yeah, buffalo that's not chicken a sauce. dip, yeah, yeah. That does sound good though, right? Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I told, I was talking about it with my boss, Mike. I'm like, imagine somebody like, yeah, I'll bring a dip to the Super Bowl party. And they show up with fucking biscuits bowl, and gravy, a bowl of biscuits and gravy. I'm going to become friends with that dude. Yeah. And my other dipping sauce, it's not really a, it's a combination, but ketchup and hot sauce or ranch and hot sauce. Yeah. Really basically just add hot sauce to anything I dip something in and it yeah. just makes it better. I like I, that. I like cheese pizza with Frank's red hot on it. 
Yeah. That's good. Um, I used to work with a guy that would put a small uh, spoonful of pita butter on cheese pizza, like piping hot cheese pizza, and he would let it like melt in. I tried it, and it it didn't suck, but it just wasn't for me. That's weird. Yeah. Well, I'll give you – I'll tell you who – it was Lewis. So, kind of makes sense. Yeah. I'll leave that alone. There's a lot of things <laughs> I can go down with peanut butter and Lewis, but we're just going to stop. I – uh <laughs> The weirdest thing, uh, it's not a weird thing. It's a pro tip. If anyone's just trying to choke down veggies, like if you're potentially looking to lose some LBs, the best way to do it, and it's the best thing I've found, because hot sauce is basically calorie-free. Yeah. If you, as long as like you're paying attention. like There are some that are like terrible, especially like if you get into barbecue sauces, they're wicked bad for you. But hot sauces generally are not. You literally take any fucking vegetable and put hot sauce on it. It's just a spicy something in your mouth. You don't taste anything out like broccoli or cauliflower. Yeah. Cauliflower is what I do it with the most. Cucumbers. Cucumbers. And yeah. Hot sauce. Yeah. I just eat cucumbers. Like I, I like, I like cucumbers plain. I like cucumber sandwich. Hell yeah. But I'll, I mean, slice up, Cucumbers. I got this idea from Todd McComas. You get summer sausage, cucumbers. You you use the cucumber instead of a cracker. Yeah. With a dab of hot sauce on the cucumber. You get the you get the crunch of the cucumber, the the summer sausage, which is delicious. And also extremely bad for you, but no. That's where the cucumber comes in. Yeah, but you could like double your output if you just put like grilled chicken in there. Yeah, but grilled chicken just isn't as good as summer sausage. You just use the saltless rub. I mean, there's there's ways around this. I've had to put up with a lot of fucking bullshit goddamn healthy food in my life. I've I'll figured- tell you one thing about this wife working from home coronavirus thing. The uh, The cooking has been phenomenal. Yeah. Pump out a couple kids and see how much cooking gets done, pal. <laughs> she made banana chocolate chip muffins from scratch. Allegedly. Uh, I went and made fucking banana and peanut butter as a snack yesterday. That was all I ate. <laughs> I didn't have lunch. I went downstairs. It was like 4.30. I'm like, I'm fucking starving. She's like, what did you eat today? I was like, nothing. She's like, oh, yeah, we didn't come up and ask if you wanted anything for lunch. I was like, yeah, and I just didn't pay attention. And it was 4 o'clock, and my work day was over. And <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, just be thankful you're not quarantined with two fucking demons. Yeah. My wife would have killed me by now if I was stuck at home with her. Yeah, because it's no longer like, oh, great, dad's home. It's dad's it's, just here. Well, no, it's like, oh, dad's working upstairs, not taking care of the kids. Yeah. And then so I come down and it's just like, it's even worse than when I was gone where it's like, here's the kids, see ya. <laughs> <laughs> and like, I don't have a problem. Like, I think everyone needs their time and their space to get away, but it's yeah. also... I don't exactly enjoy dealing with some of the people I deal with every day and then walking down and being like, oh, okay. Yeah. Let me tell you, it's no less work for me if I'm working from home. <laughs> At least if I'm driving to work, I get like 40 minutes in the car Yeah. to just zone out and listen to whatever I want. And Not at home. But it's the healthy thing to do right now. Yeah, that all stops next week for me. So, you going in for the outage? Oh yeah. You got to work there. Oh yeah. Yeah, we're essential. Yeah, that sucks. 
my guy. I haven't been essential the last three weeks working from home, so what's the fucking difference? Yeah. About? Well, we want to be able to have the face to face interface. FaceTime me, fuckheads. I, yeah. I'll put on a shirt. I'll put on <laughs> pants. <laughs> Only from the waist up. It, it, this is like the the stereotypical like complete old people not understanding technology and not utilizing technology to their best. It's just the people there are so fucking old and they're like, everything could have an effect. I say this with the caveat of, I understand it's a nuclear reactor and we need to protect it and we need to make sure that we don't do anything bad. However, if you have a supervisor in his office, it's just going to call me on my phone at my desk, which is forwarded to my cell phone. Or he might walk up and see me, have him FaceTime me. If he's got to show me something or text me a picture. Yeah. Like I, I, there's nothing you can't do. We can replace all human interaction at this point. Like realistically without, with the exception of like, if I had to go walk something down. Yeah. In which case you go walk it down and FaceTime me. Like, for fuck's sakes. I'll walk with you. Yeah. Be I'll be right there. me on your way. Take pictures, email me, and call me and have fucking a conversation. Yeah. Fine. <clears throat> Whatever. Fuck them. I, uh, I have a customer that's an airline pilot. He came in today and uh, he, I was like, do you get to work from home? <laughs> and he's Little like, flight he's, sim. <laughs> he's actually been out of work. Yeah. Due to a uh, knee injury. Oh. Luckily, it happened on the job. So. How the fuck do you hurt your knee flying a goddamn plane? Well, he, he fell or something walking to the plane and like screwed, like tore his ACL, MCL, LCL, like everything. Um, so he, uh, so he's he's at home and he's actually pretty much fully recovered. But he also has like a year's worth of paid time off. Yeah. So he's like, I'm good. <laughs> I don't need to work. Um, so he's kind of just taking some time. Uh, yeah, I don't blame him. I mean, yeah, neither do I. I uh... um, yeah, I just can't wait to see how many people get sick. Yeah, even if they're not really sick. Yeah, I mean, you're bringing in 600 people from, or more, from all over the country, and, like, what what's your plan? Yeah. I wonder if, uh, I wonder if the, um, the state of New Hampshire's found out about this yet, or realized it's happening. Yeah, they definitely have. They've been in contact with everybody and yeah. we've been deemed essential and it's essential that we do this and blah, gotcha. blah, blah. Uh, so there's a big email that came out today, but whatever. I mean, sure. We'll be essential. That's fine. I don't, I mean, we do produce half of the state of New Hampshire electricity, so <laughs> Kind of essential. <laughs> kind of need to get this thing back up and running. Yeah. They're, uh, I don't know if they're going to keep testing. They're, they were testing people on their way on site. Like, yeah. Not like CDC test, but like, do you have a fever? Take There's, your temperature. Yeah. Do you feel sick? Yes, no. Okay, go in. Yeah. I don't know what happens if you have, if you have a temperature. Like, do I just get to go home? Like, <laughs> people, you're gonna be putting hot water on your head before yeah. you go to the gate. <laughs> I'm go fucking run a mile before I drive right through the fence. And yeah, oh, you gotta work from. Ah, oh, damn the luck. I'll work from home. All right. And then if yeah. you if you do have that symptom, they're like you're immediately 14 day quarantine from work. Yeah. So if you can work from home, you work from home, and then you have to go see a physician to get a letter either see an offsite like your personal physician or see the on-site doctor for a return to work really so i'm like 
I mean, hmm. <laughs> Although working, I'm I'm working night shift, and that would absolutely suck to do from home. Yeah, it'd just be brutal. Waiting for the phone to ring to do something, just yeah. sitting here, like no. While everybody, while everybody else is asleep. Yeah, can't like I'd have to move my off. I'd have to put my office where we record, probably freeze yeah. my ass off out there. Yeah, that would be tough, but. The only other thing I had, I I bitch about people driving a lot. I realize this, but <laughs> I'm used con- to it. Construction zones. Yep. If you got Jersey barriers up, I ain't slowing down. I mean, now, now if there's guys like picking trash on the side of the highway or you know fix like I'll. I'm the I'm a big proponent of slow down, move over. Yeah. Don't get that wrong. But if you've closed a goddamn lane of traffic and put fucking barriers in place that I can't run through. Fucking see you, bud. Like doesn't matter. I'm sorry. Talking about on ninety five. Oh yeah. And they have those Jersey barriers like on the New Jersey turnpike where people are doing 75 miles an hour by them. Right. You know, they don't have slow down zones. Like <clears throat> that's the same style of barrier that they have on the Tappan or used to have on the Tappan Z bridge for lane changes. And they're meant for it. Yeah. Like I get like the whole, I, I just think construction zones, like slow down in a construction zone to 55. Yeah. No. Yes, if you're working like and you just have one of those crash trucks and like you're doing something like a, a repair on the side of the road. Yeah. Dude, first one, I'll slow down or I'll get the fuck away from you. Like I'm not gonna drive right by you if I can avoid it. Like if we're on a three lane highway and you're in the you know, on the breakdown lane, I will at least be in the middle, if not the far left. Yeah. But hey, fucking Portsmouth Bridge right now. Yeah. Fuck you. I'm doing that seventy five like- over it. <laughs> I mean, and if you got through those Jersey barriers, there ain't no railing to hold you from going over the side of that bridge. No, it's no. just two by fours. <laughs> you're fucking, you're, you're sent it, bud. You better hope you <laughs> yeah. hit a big part of the bridge. Yeah. Otherwise, you're going. It's a fucking swim bow. <laughs> <laughs> fucking, we're going for style points at that point. I don't think. I, can, I don't ever remember. I know people have jumped off of it. I don't ever remember a vehicle driving off driving off of it. Uh, I don't think so. I don't think I want to try either, though. No, no, no. It'd be interesting to see if it, you know, seatbelt save lives in that case. I think just the sheer impact of the water would probably just crumple the car. Hi, Liv. Hi, Uncle Huey. Hi, how are you? You saying good night? Mm-hmm. Go ahead. Talk. Good night, Dad. Good night. <laughs> Uncle Easy, Huey. Kid. Uh, good night, hon. How's your wiggly tooth? He says, how's your wiggly tooth? That's good. Two. She's got two, two of them. them. Yeah. Ask her how the other one got wiggly. I how'd the other one? my other tooth on the slide when I was going to run up. Yeah, went to run up the slide and smashed her face right off it. I mean, do there's one time. way to make you got to make them wiggly. I guess that's one way. Four. You got four wiggly teeth. Mm-hmm. Four wiggly teeth. Two on the bottom are wiggly. Two on the top are wiggly. Yeah. You're gonna be able to whist- whistle really good soon. Yeah. She can whistle. Yeah, you can whistle. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome. All right, you going to bed? Okay. Night, live. All right. Uncle Yui says night. Good night. <laughs> oh, speaking of, I know we're we're right in an hour right now. Yeah. But I don't know. Are you on the talk of tick? I have it. I don't use it. Don't. Don't. <laughs> Dude, I'm so addicted. <laughs> it's not even funny. I see it more and more. I saw a funny meme today. It was uh, 
it was like a, a mean slash public service announcement. Um, it was like looters beware. There's a bunch of dads stuck at home watching 10 year olds make TikTok videos with guns. They can't shoot. Yeah. We, or, we, we put that out today. That's where I saw it. <laughs> I've kind of been on a social, I still have Instagram, but I've been kind of on a social media hiatus. Yeah. I'm okay. So two things we talked about this last time, but cash app, if you don't have it, get it. Um, because it's awesome. Uh, right now I am up 50%. I'm plus 57 with putting in 120. Nice. I am loving the stock market right now. Today. The stock market had their best game today since 1933. Yeah. Like, where does this shit come from? It's just... Oh, you want to talk while waiting? Mm -hmm. Okay. What do you want to talk about? I really miss fishing. Miss fishing, yep. It's open now. Yeah, it's Once open it gets, and it's free. And it's free, which doesn't help me. I already bought my fishing license. Yeah, I haven't bought mine yet. Thanks, but Janet. I need to. You already know how to fish. Yeah, but you need a license. Daddy needs a license to fish. Because we live in a free country, but we got to pay for everything. <laughs> <laughs> I think one thing I'm going to try this year is uh, turkey hunting. Yeah? Yeah. That's coming right up. That's some... Now, just I, do you think they're going to close the woods? They closed the beaches already. I don't think so. That's the most asinine thing ever. Yeah. I, no, we're closing the beaches. And the big thing, the big question I had about that whole thing is, I don't know, if you're not from around here, you probably don't know, but last year or two years ago, there was something that was brought up that um, the town actually doesn't own the beach. Yeah. Um, Long Sands Beach is owned by well half of it's owned by one family they bought it for $125 do you know how much you could sell that to the town for you yeah turn, be like because they owned a low tide mark so you could literally just cordon off the whole beach it'd be yeah, hilarious be like, you guys could close it but you owe me some money yeah <laughs> just uh, well, I mean, granted, they're not making any money off the beach. Yeah. Maybe they, I don't know. Who owns it after the low tide mark? The ocean. It's, like, it's just the ocean. Nobody owns it. I think it's state. It's or no, it's uh, U.S. government. Because then it goes into federal. international waters. Yeah. yeah, it's federal and then international. What is what is international waters? Five miles? Seven miles? Seven. You can do some but, crazy shit in international waters. You can do whatever you want. But, I mean, if you really wanted to, like, turn around and be like, all right, you want to close the beach. Yeah. You're not closing my section of the beach. Yeah. It'd be such a flex. I'd love to right. be that. I'm, I would flex that. I would, too. And I'd also Imagine, like, even if you, like, all the surfers, if you just opened it up like that family opened up that section to the surfers for Church. five bucks a head. I just do like 25 bucks for the season or like just in like right now. Yeah. You know, five bucks a head, you could unlimited surfing. But if you leave, you have to, like, if you leave the beach, you have to pay the $5 again and donate it all the charity. Yeah. Or charge people that want to walk on it. Dollar dollar per person to walk. You gotta stay fucking social distancing. If you're with the group you're with, that's fine. But stay away. Stay six feet away from everybody else. Yeah. And, and pick up your dog shit. Yeah. That's why I take my dogs walking in the woods. I ain't picking up dog shit. Fuck yeah. Me. That's what I love Riley so much for that because he would just shit in the woods. Yeah, Diesel. The last time he went to the vet, shit right on the sidewalk. Will be. It was hilarious. <laughs> 
She got home. She's like, he walked out of the vet and just sat down right in the middle of the walkway and took a shit. And I was like, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but that's where like, I, when we go walking, so I, this is going to be a very unpopular opinion. I don't care that I'm admitting this, but if we go walking on a woods trail around here, yeah, and my dog leaves the trail, that poop staying wherever that poop went down. If it's not on the trail that people are going to walk in, pal, it's the woods. You could step in deer shit, cow shit, yep. fox shit, wolf shit, coyote shit, yep. deer shit, or my dog shit. Hm, fuck you. My I, shit. I could poop off the trail. Yeah. Done it. Done it. I agree. I I got no qualms about that. And if the dog – if honestly – the amount of times I carried uh, dog poop bags with me with Riley, I'll, I'll go ahead and give you a guess. No, about zero. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And if he there's only been him, one instance where I've had to go back to the truck and find a plastic bag or something to fucking scoop it with. I, I was rocking. I was with Riley somewhere, and he shit in the middle of a trail, and I found a stick and I shoveled it into the woods. <laughs> Um, but I'm not. Yeah, I. Sorry. Oh, anyways, getting back to TikTok. Yeah. So I don't know if you saw the video I put up of the dogs and or of Olivia and Senna going crazy. Yeah, I haven't. It was on my in uh, Instagram story, I think. But. So I put that up on there, right? Accidentally posted it from mainly stupid has a TikTok because we have an Instagram. So it just automatically signed me up for that. Accidentally posted it on that. I don't even know how the fuck I got on. I didn't realize even I could switch users. I didn't really know I had two user accounts there. Yeah. But I did. No tags, no nothing, just the video. The kid's got fucking over 1,100 views. Holy cow. Now, mind you, that also gained us 41 followers on TikTok. No fucking idea who. They just started following. That's pretty cool. I posted the exact same video, the legit same video, on my personal TikTok, yep. which is at Foulfly. It's got... Uh, three views <laughs> with tags and I got exactly zero more followers. <laughs> the internet's like, wild. What the fuck? I'm like, I don't understand this. Yeah. And he was like, well, that's the thing. Like, that's why a lot of people are like, you know, TikTok and their algorithms and how people got so big and what, I don't know. It, she started talking fucking social media stuff and i just yeah. blacked out speaking of social media or, or internet people where's ty schmidt uh quarantined really yeah he could he could be dead r.i.p in peace ty did schmidt. he did he get tested uh i don't think so he i guess he was feeling real real bad on friday and just left um the other side of that is his Girlfriend, fiance, I don't remember yeah. if he's one of, uh, is a nurse. Yeah. So the chances of her bringing it home and yeah, him, yeah, not great, not not good for the old die boy. So he's he's, he's so quarantined. He's, he's quarantined. I don't know how he's feeling, and he's also probably the least, uh, well, most like me and least unhealthiest person in that entire office. With the yeah. Connor, who just eats funyuns and rips Marlboro Reds. <laughs> I gotta say, Connor's grown on me more and more. But what do you think about Hoyer coming back? We'll get a little sports talk in here. <sighs> you know, I I don't know <laughs> at this point. <laughs> I think they give Stedman. A, I mean, we'll see what happens in 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 training camp. Who wins it? Hoyer definitely has more experience. 
I think honestly, they they're bringing Hoyer in to be a a um vet voice over Stidham, and they're yeah. gonna roll Stidham. You think so? I don't think I don't. I really don't think there's going to be a quarterback battle. I also don't feel like New England is ever a place that. Well, it's hard to say because it's been twenty fucking years. Yeah, but. I don't feel like they're a place that like goes into a season and they're like, oh, we don't know who our quarterback is. Yeah, that's like, just yeah, not that's not the Bill Belichick style. He'll yeah. t- he'll say that, and he'll openly be like, well, you know, we're gonna figure it out who it's gonna be. He'll never tell someone who's gonna be the starter. Yeah, he hardly but, did that when Brady was a starter. Everybody right. just knew. You know, but Brady I, was on the injured list. Probably. 18 out of the 20 years he was on the team. Right. But I think, you know, you look at, I mean, even after Matt Castle filled in for Brady. Yeah. When he blew his knee out, it was always just understood that Brady was going to be the starter. Yeah. So, I mean, okay. There's going to be storylines with it, but I, I think they're going to roll with the kid unless somehow in some way they fucking trade draft picks and get up to a, Pick that kid out of Oregon. He's yeah. like six seven or something, like perfect court. But Stidham's there too. Like I don't know. But then uh, Deshaun Watson was like all over Instagram or Twitter, like posted about how he lost his favorite receiver there, and you know people are like, just go to the Patriots, and so which that off all obviously sparked. A bunch of New England heads, you know, sports heads saying, you know, Deshaun to the Patriots. I don't see I I, I this I, is I, like I the reoccurring it. thought I have about like if if the Patriots picked up any quarterback other than Stidham or Hoyer right now, it would be it, it just it keeps popping into my head that it would be Andy Dalton. They can't. I don't think Dalton will play. Dude, they have no cap space. Yeah. They tag Tooney. Like, that yeah. ate up so much money. And you look at what they've got. They've only got, like, fucking eight mil in cap Yeah, this year. So, it's like, who's going to come in? Like, Jameis. I, I would say Jameis. Is, but he's still going to be in the 10 to, 10 to $15 million range. Yeah. You know, I mean, dude, look at. Indy right now is forty million dollars in fucking quarterbacks. They're paying a fucking Jacoby. Jackass, Jacoby, yeah, fucking eighteen, and they're paying fucking retard Rivers twenty five. And Sean Merriman is a fucking idiot. I don't know if you <laughs> caught that part of fucking the uh, of uh, Matt saying Phil, show. yeah, saying Philip Rivers is better than Tom Brady. Yeah, and did you hear his reasoning? He's like, well, you know. He's he might not have the football, the rings, and the qualifications, and the arm the strength, records, and the records. But I'd take I think Philip Rivers is a better player, and it's like, well, you just listed off like the only important parts of a court just because he's younger. Yeah. Uh, like, but, no. <laughs> <laughs> you Tom have Brady the, is the winningest have, quarterback of all time. You have an option to go with Tom Brady. Or literally anyone else, and you're gonna pick literally anyone else. Like, and that's it. Like Philip Rivers, you can say what you want, but when he had Antonio Gates, like they had a good team. They didn't do anything with it. There was some times, you know, the the Chargers were threats to the Patriots in you know making a playoff run and stuff. Yeah, they got their so, asses handed to them each yeah. time. But I mean, hey, good try. Um, I I think you look at. I think Philip Rivers is our generation's Dan Marino. I yeah, really do. He, I would agree with that. I do. And don't get me wrong. I love Philip Rivers. Philip Rivers is probably – he was like the first huge athlete I ever met. Um, NC State kid. Saw him. Hung out with him. Super cool dude. Super nice. He is ni- as nice as he can fucking ever be. Like all the stories are true. Like he doesn't swear. He didn't swear in college even like – the kid's just – the dude is just nice. He's got to be patient, too. He's got, like, 14 kids. Yeah, 10 kids. How are you going to fucking self-quarantine? You're not supposed to be within fucking groups of greater than seven. 
well, three of you, <laughs> you're cut. <laughs> we got to trade you away. Yeah. You're going to Grammy's house. Good luck. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I just, I, I love Phillip Rivers. I think yeah. he's a good quarterback. I don't think he's a great quarterback. I think you saying, I think you, you know, saying he's our generation's Dan Marino. Great play. I think that makes the you know, utmost he's, sense. He's never had, you know, well, I mean, granted, Dan Marino was known as Cocaine Dan, but he's never had like scandals. Yeah. You know, Marino never really got into any trouble. I don't, yeah. not that I know of. But like, you look at a, a winning quarter. He he does have a winning percentage. He's a decent quarterback. He's got a lot of touchdowns. He's got a lot of yards. Yeah. But it looked like he was throwing a goddamn beach ball at the end of the fucking yeah. season last year. We'll see. And I can't – to go AFC to AFC and think it's going to go well is just like, I don't think you got it. I Yeah. I think Indy's going to be pissed off by week six. Oh, would be my guess. I don't know. We'll Patriots season is going to be interesting. Yeah. The AFC really is going to be interesting. I mean, I think my my mom made a bet with me that the Patriots aren't even going to make it uh to the to the playoffs or they're not even going to win the AFC. AFC uh, winning the East I think is very much still in contention. I mean, who Buffalo didn't get better. They were the, the only, only one that really got better was Miami. Miami. And they're a fucking dumpster fire to begin with, so it's yeah. sort of just like polishing a turd. And and they have all Patriots players, so and coaches, so it's not like Belichick doesn't have an idea of how to play against him. Right. Yeah. You know? Oh, I, did you, did you? Sorry to sort of transition. Yeah, go for it. Did you go back and see my ACL or AFL um, fight with the Aussies? I didn't. Oh, dude. Fuck Australians in their goddamn football league. You know what? Go fuck off. Is it? Australian fo- football league. Like football or football? No, neither. It's like rugby, but different. I don't know how it's played. I don't understand it one bit. This is how this whole shit show got started, right? So Pat McAfee found it because they're still playing it because Australia doesn't believe in fucking goddamn pandemics, apparently. Yeah. Which, I mean, they're an island of criminals, so why the fuck would they? I've got some hatred towards Australia. Sorry. Don't e- I don't ever want to go there now. Fuck them. I, I, hope I hope their fucking goddamn forest burns again, you fucking goddamn <laughs> fuck. Shots fired. Yeah, fuck them. Uh. I uh, I was out on Australia and I learned that it took 24 hours to get there. I still think it's fake too. It's a fucking <laughs> dream world. <laughs> but I digress. So McAfee posted, who who do we like tonight? Because he's betting on it through FanDuel. Um, and it was North Melbourne versus whatever the other team was. It was something fucking – it was a name. It was something different. had nothing to do with Melbourne in it. I posted, you got to take Melbourne. I have no fucking idea what I'm doing, but Melbourne's a big city. Sure, take it. Chirps immediately. Chirp City from fucking the goddamn fucking Australians. Really? Immediately. I was just – like I was blown away. Like, I really – it just – it sent me off into a world of not happy. Let me see if I can find it. Um, uh, so while you're looking um, for the, to update the folks at home, on uh, I've made two badge lanyards out of paracord. Yes. So far, I just ordered some more paracord through work. I ordered another 50 feet. I started looking on how to do a, um, a duck call lanyard. Yeah. 
And ever, have you ever given any thought to how much paracord is actually in a duck call lanyard? Oh, it's like fucking 1,500 feet. It was, it's roughly, it's, it's not that much. It's like, it's 150 feet. Yeah, it, it's a shitload. Yeah. But, I mean, I look at mine, and mine's like four or five passes deep at least. Yeah. Like, it's, um, it's, it's a lot. And, like, I'll show you mine. I'll bring it to the shop one day or something. Yeah. We'll stay stand six feet away, and I'll hand it to you. <clears throat> well, I have. I mean, I have my old one. Yeah, no, this is for once, but this is like this is way different than because like I had the other ones too, where it was like you probably use three strands. Yeah, you know, to do like the 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 main base part of it. Yeah, the one I have now is like at at least four or six strands. Like it's fucking huge. Like it's thick. Yeah. Um, I got my tweet here. So Pat McAfee started it and said, "Hello, AFL enthusiasts." Who are we betting on here? North Melbourne versus St. Kilda. I said, got to go Melbourne. Underdogs, plus 102. The first response, it's North Melbourne Kangaroos, another team called Melbourne. I was like, there were two choices. Only one has Melbourne in it. St. Kilda is also a Melbourne team. 18 teams in total. And then they fucking list all their teams. I don't give a fuck. Fuck you, Australia. (laughs) All right. That's like saying, would you pick a Ford Mustang or a Chevy Cobra or a Chevy Corvette? And you say Ford. Yeah. Yeah, there's fucking 70 other fucking Fords. I don't give a fuck. We're only talking about one Ford here. Yeah. You knew what fucking Ford I picked because I said fucking Ford, you fucking <coughs> twat waffles. <laughs> I just stopped. I was so fucking mad at this whole thing. I was just like, fuck, fuck Australia. I hope you fucking burn again. Yeah. You didn't learn. Kill all the fucking koalas, you fucking goddamn Aussies. <laughs> Aussie, Aussie, Aussie. Hoy, hoy, hoy. Suck it. I know what I'm naming this episode. <laughs> hey, Australia, fuck off. Um, let's see what's trending on the old Twitters. Anything good? Um, bet your coronavirus is trending. Uh, nope. No. Nope. Well, that's new. Oh, that's for me. Hold on, trending. Uh, Easter. Easter. Trump's back to work push stirs up a debate versus economy versus the coronas. So did you see that Texas lawmaker? Did we talk about that already? Yeah, the guy that said he's willing to risk his life. <laughs> he's he'd rather see the old people die than the economy <laughs> collapse. <laughs> and he's like, Hey, look, I'm one of the old people. I'm fine. Like, yeah. whatever. What a wild move. <laughs> like, yikes, not a great fucking push for a fucking re-election pal yeah um let's see here six trillion funches oh yeah devin uh devin funches signs with the green bay packers yeah who cares they want everyone to u.s restaurants are calling for the great american takeout on march 24th that's tomorrow yep takeout tomorrow apparently well Fucked if I know. Um, what else we got? Yeah, I'm going back and rewatching fucking Letter Kenny. That's my next move. Yeah. Starting starting from the beginning, going right back through. I've been uh, the wife and I have uh, binged this show called Party Down South. Yeah, the MTV Which, one. Yeah, well, it was originally on CMT. Yeah. And then I guess MTV got the rights to the episode, so it's on it's on MTV. Uh so we we're on the final season of that. I did watch Bert Kreischer his this new, new special. One? Yeah. Phenomenal. It's awesome. Um 
then Mandy had never seen the one where he talks about the machine, like how he got that name. Um, so we watched that one. Tom Segura has got a new special out, which I'll probably check out. Have you seen, have you watched the Chappelle one yet? I haven't. Oh, you got to Chappelle because, and you also got to kind of teleport back to, since now you've heard the Burt Kreischer and if yeah. you've listened to any of the Tom Segura, like this was when like cancel culture was full, full on comedians were fucking scared to go on stage. Yeah. And then Chappelle comes out and does what Chappelle does and yeah. just fucking burns the place to the ground. It's fucking awesome. Bill Burr's Paper Tiger. That's another one I got to watch. Uh, that's a good one. Bill Burr's hilarious. He's. Um, but yeah. So that's what we're watching. Um, then I, you know, there's another show, Northwood's Law. I could watch. Oh. Fuck, is that, new season, is that new season out yet? I got to keep... Not I, yet. I could be on. Yeah. Fuck, I forgot all I'll, about that. I'll keep an eye out for it. I'm re-watching all the main ones right now. Yeah. I like watching the main ones. It, it, some of the New Hampshire ones, but I like watching the main ones because every episode, they're, they're somewhere pretty much where I've been before. Right. I really... Relatable. Enjoy. More yeah. relatable. Like Mandy... She gives me shit for it all the time because I'll be like, hey, I know that guy. Or I'll pause it. I'll be like, I've been there. Yeah. She's like, no, you haven't. I said, uh, yeah, I have. Yeah. Yeah, I have. Oh, so went up to uh, Northern Outdoors. I don't know if we talked about this on the last podcast. No. La- last last weekend or the weekend before this past one. Yeah. Before we were locked down. Yeah. Saturday night. I drove up with Jonathan's brother to just before Jack McVeigh. It's the Forks. Yep. And stayed at a place called Northern Outdoors. And was talking to the bartender who he works. He works up there during the summer as a rafting guide and a, and a fishing guide. And then typically he'll work part of the snowmobile season and then he goes and goes down to the keys and uh fishes down there just for he bartends and yeah does day trips and shit down there so and tell me if you think this is reasonable full day fly fishing two people lunch 425 bucks yeah plus tip and like talking to him, he's like, on a slow day, we'll catch 15 to 20 salmon and trout. On an average day, it's 40. Yeah. I was like, that seems like a really smoking deal. Is that a, a float fishing up there? Yeah. They use a, they, they have a whitewater rafting yeah. raft that they converted to be a drift boat basically drift boat, yeah. and they go out like you start at 5 a.m so they head down river before they release water for the for the rafting yeah and you fish you know all the way down river and then you end where you take out you basically fly fish for bass at the end of the day yeah like in the evening on top water stuff yeah it's not i mean that's not a bad price i mean yeah, you know, think you're. And he was showing me some of the pictures that like just average Joe's catch, and they were nice fish. Yeah, like really nice brook trout and salmon. So I, I probably wouldn't do that, but they have. It's actually pretty reasonable during bird hunting season. Um, they have these lodgeminiums, which is basically a small condo with you it sleeps. Sleeps four people fairly comfortable. It's got a futon, two beds, two full beds, and a queen bed. Um, and then you can rent. They have like two person cabins. Um, but they like one thing I've always wanted to do is because it's super ATV trails around there. Yeah. Is um, do an early season bird hunting trip and rent a side by side and go hunting out of that. 
we'll see what happens. Hmm. Well, I just read a very scary uh, conspiracy theory. What's that? I don't know where this came from, but a lot of people are calling it bullshit. It's still fucked up to read. I'll read it. All right. It'll make you feel real great. <laughs> uh, the world deserves the truth. Please brace yourselves for the following information I'm about to share with you. It's not going to be an easy to understand or cope with, but I'm sure many reject the truth entirely, but I can no longer keep this classified information from the public, so do with it what you will. In the first week of November 2019, NASA and the Vatican Observatory both discovered and confirmed a fast-approaching comet that is so extremely large that a collision with Earth on its current path is inevitable. On November 9th, 2019, the United Nations held a secret meeting with world leaders to develop an exit strategy, in quotations, to make sure that everyone is as comfortable as possible for what scientists have carefully calculated and confirmed as the apocalypse in the months to follow. The plan would be implement the scapegoat virus, COVID-19, which will cause flu-like symptoms, spread easily and fast, distract from the truth, and force a worldwide quarantine, with the sole purpose of initiating home time to be spent with family while minimizing overall panic, anarchy, and premature mass casualties that would otherwise take over <laughs> with public knowledge and foresight of the apocalypse. Unfortunately, we are not talking about an obstacle we will have the ability to overcome. This comment will bring with it death and extinction of every living organism we know to exist. A complete global annihilation from which there will be no survivors on Earth as we know it. Understandably, the UN does not want to create a global panic. However, I truly believe that everyone should have the right to know and deserves a chance to accept this truth. The details of this information will be confirmed in the weeks leading up to the end. Watch as the global elite step down from their positions by the masses. They will be doing exactly what they want you to do, which is spend time at home with their family and be at peace. These are certainly a scary threat, but it is my hope that we as a civilization can be responsible with this information and come together and enjoy what brief moments we have left on this beautiful planet. With love, peace, and blessings to all humanity, your brother slash friend, retired CIA agent, Scott W. Yeah, I don't believe that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I would go ahead and I hope it's bullshit. Uh, yeah, I, I feel like there's enough like um, backyard astronomists that wouldn't wouldn't let that slide by. Yeah, the fucking comet in Armageddon, or the asteroid in Armageddon, was spotted by some dude in his backyard with a super awesome telescope. But, but did the government know about it beforehand, and they're just trying to cover it up, pal? I don't know. Area Fifty One. It's a fucking scary place. Watch some documentaries on that, and you'll really be fucking confused. Yeah, I'm going to go ahead and just stay away from that. Don't watch th Ancient Aliens then. Don't. Yeah, I think the safest thing for me to watch is the Fireplace channel on Netflix. <laughs> <laughs> so, I, uh, I've i been just watching funny stuff. I just don't yeah. care anymore. I just, I'm on board with comedies. I try and watch doc like I haven't even watched that tiger documentary. I really want to see it, but I also have heard it's really fucked up. The tiger documentary? Yeah. Yeah. I haven't I don't want to watch it. I think Mandy's, I'm just gonna I'm I know just gonna, Mandy's watching it. But. I'm just gonna listen to the pod tomorrow when they talk about it. And yeah. just call it good. <laughs> exactly. That's it feels like I watched it. Yeah. After that. But. Oh, I think all that's right. all I got in the tank. Yeah, we went. I I dragged this out an extra thirty minutes. So I apologize. Hey, no worries. It was good to get a a good one in. I I haven't felt like I've been on my game the past few. So, no, we actually like didn't have that much dead air this time. It's weird. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe I don't know. Like another month or so, we might be cleared to fucking talk to each other again. Which then I'm gonna be in an outage. Uh confirmed Wednesdays off which means I don't go to work Wednesday night, which means Wednesday night we should record. All right. So we're going to be switching it up, change it to a Wednesday evening release for your Thursday, Thursday, Thursdays. Yeah, that'll work. Dropping the truck off tomorrow. Just got confirmation. Oh, boy. I'm so excited. 
<laughs> Diesel Garrett. It's back, back. baby. I'm back. <laughs> I'm back. All right. Well, thank you all for listening. We appreciate thank it. Thank you. Comment, like, subscribe, tell your friends. You ain't got anything else to do. You're supposed to be fucking quarantined. Pop us on. Yeah, now 48 episodes now. That's That should take you, you know. Yeah, hour apiece. That's a solid week's worth of work. Yeah. You know, if you just, if you listen to one every other day, it'll give you a little while. So. Yeah, we're on the, fu- we're out of the fucking quarantine. Help us help you get through the quarantine. Bingo. It's what we're here for. It's what we try to do. You know, we are essential. We, I mean, we're essentially just coming to you live. Help, help us help you get through it. Right. Help us help you help everyone. We'll all make it. It'll yeah. be fine. Be nice Don't make, it's made up anyways. Fuck it. <laughs> and do us a favor. Wash your fucking hands. So that's where you, you fucking opened it back up, pal. That's where I just look at this and it's like, this is the stupidest fucking thing in the world that we're shutting down the entire, essentially the entire economy of this fucking U S and just telling people, well, the only way to recover is just wash your hands. Like what the fuck? I need a little more from you. If you're going to fucking tell me I can't go to a goddamn beach, pal. Sorry. It's just where I'm at. I just, I'm, I get it. I'm a cynical person at this point in my life. I get it. Just be nice to people. I'm probably going to get it now and fucking almost die from it because I've talked so much shit, but. Corona ain't no joke. I think it is though. We'll you never know. How, know. Do you know April how many first people, is coming up. Do you know how many people have died in the U.S.? Less than 600 last I knew. 400 this morning. Last time I looked, it was 593. It was 400 according to the CDC today. And that just, to me, is not enough for me to fucking want to shut down everything. Hey. Let's see here. Let's go CDC. Duck off. We're, we're going to end this on fucking Garrett being cynical and not believing in diseases. <laughs> I also don't get a flu shot, so... Yeah. I don't believe in them. I think they just make you more sick. Cases in the U.S. 544 total deaths right now. 544? 544. There's been 44,183 cases. So, what's that? That's fucking, that's not even a percentage. It's like 1.1%. It's on par with the flu. We don't shut down for the flu every year. Fuck off, people. I'm on board with the fucking dude from Texas. (laughs) I'm not running running for office. I can say it. You're a fucking (laughs) asshole for saying it, pal. Yeah. Hey, that's where we're going to leave you, folks. Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll catch up with you next week. Uh, I, uh, we might, uh, no, we'd have to sneak in an early Tuesday. So it'll be a Wednesday episode next week. All right. Sounds Unless we want to get one in on the weekend. <sighs> Fuck. But there's really not much going on. So it would literally just be me bitching about my family, <laughs> <laughs> which I'm stuck inside with. At least well, next next week, I'll be able to talk to people, get yeah. the corona, and have stories to tell you how the corona sucks. You got, yeah. <laughs> well, I hope you don't get it. Yeah, we'll uh, see. <laughs> Fuck it. All right, fella. Folks, have a great night. Have a great night. Stay inside. 
Wash your hands because that's the only thing that's going to stop this thing, apparently. <laughs> Fucking dish 20 soap. seconds. Dish soap. 20 hey, you seconds. Think, you think brake clean kills it? Oh, yeah. I don't think brake clean sold out anywhere. What the fuck are people worried about? Yeah, the trouble with brake clean, though, is it's highly toxic. Allegedly. Allegedly. I still got my hands. Yeah, so do I. It's the only thing I use to clean my hands when I work in the shop. Yeah, as dry as my hands are right now, if I sprayed them with brake clean, they'd probably just shatter. Yeah. I bet you there's plenty of tubs of Orange Gojo, though. The wife asked me to pick up hand soap, and I turned around and said, well, there's a fucking half gallon of fucking Orange Gojo under the... And she says, no. It's literally the best soap made in the world. It's not Dove. It doesn't moisturize your hands. Actually, I think Orange Gojo cuts your hands. It's perfect. It's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> Gives you man hands. Yep. All right, All right, seller. Let's end this thing. Peace. Oh, oopsies. <laughs>